Hi there, everyone. Um, nice to uh, nice to virtually virtually meet you all. Um, my name is Mark Preston, and I I work at Sticky Eyes, a marketing agency, um, based in Leeds, with offices in in London and various other places around around the UK. Um, like any good marketer, I've I brought some slides with me to to hide behind. So I'll just share my screen um, briefly, and then uh, and then uh, we'll get we'll get cracking. So I guess the the um, the focus of the presentation that I'm going to talk through today is just about more the the people side of of digital transformation, um, the 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 people at the heart and the the, the core of kind of um, empowering and um, actioning a lot of digital transformation, which I think can often be um, forgotten about. Um, so just to just to recap, my name is Mark Preston. I'm um, performance strategy director at, at Sticky Eyes. Um, been been working in marketing for around ten years now, and and helping to align client client strategies um, from a B two B B two C uh, perspective. Um, what I thought I would kind of do first is just. Um, try to do what most marketers don't um, and simplify something. Uh, we, we have a tendency, we have a real talent to make the simple complex and the complex even more complex. But um, what what is digital transformation? I guess in, in the context of marketing, um, it of course doesn't end, begin um, uh, with, with marketing at all. It's a much more pervasive, much more uh, broad, um process transformational thing um but what i've tried to kind of boil it down to here is basically the the kind of strategic use of of digital technologies to do to do more effective things to do to do things more effectively and to do those more effective things more efficiently um which is hopefully broad enough to capture uh, <laughs> a lot of what people are, are trying to do with with digital initiatives but um from a from a marketing perspective a lot of that obviously boils down to um trying to identify trying to find and reach customers trying to understand how to most effectively meet the needs that they have and and ultimately drive kind of business growth and and, and revenue but the big four things that you kind of see talked about a lot in context of, of digital transformation um, are these and they're they're very um they, they can be very abstract, they can be very technical topics around elastic cloud computing, big data, artificial intelligence, internet of things, all, all this kind of stuff that you read about and that you see Sunday supplements talking about or, um, uh, you know, Forbes articles and, and things like that. But really what, what they kind of boil down to is um, a series of technologies that have essentially allowed us to um, get smarter and get better at what we're doing and scale that. You know, cloud computing is basically using someone else's computer rather than your own to store loads of data, using Amazon, using AWS to store and, and compute all that data rather than um, some poor IT technician in a server cupboard in, in the back um, trying to keep his service call with a hand fan. Um, big data um, collecting loads of, of information, basically, um, more and more. Uh, data is becoming available at exponential um, rates. I think the amount of data um, uh, that is processed in any one year now is is, is equivalent to all the words spoken ever in the history of the human race, um, which just kind of underlines how much data there is floating around, and, and that's only going to increase. Um, it's accessing that quickly um, and with no need for sampling, which is the kind of key thing um, a lot of marketing and a lot of the principles of 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 kind of digital activation have been based on sample data so trying to get to um a, a decent statistically significant sampling size big data kind of takes that 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 necessity away a little bit more artificial intelligence basically programs software that learn from that data and help us predict things that we couldn't predict previously and the iot um you know my my mobile phone um devices that have sensors that are connected and can communicate that data um, back into 
um, our, our artificial intelligence programs to basically get smarter and do more things, um, uh, make better predictions based on that data, whether that's uh, a Tesla car communicating uh, its road speed back up to to, to a, um, a, a, a cloud system, or um, it, it could be your mobile phone telling you that you're walking past a particular retailer um, and that someone's trying to 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 retarget you with ads or or something like that so hopefully that kind of gives a, an overview of um of what we're sort of talking about and it's very much a process it's very much um not a defined roadmap it's an ongoing iterative thing um i guess the the, the tricky thing is you know trying to boil that down to to something that sounds a little bit more simple what we tend to find is that they often fail. Digital transformation initiatives um, and programs often often in failure. And there's lots of kind of clickbaity style articles and, and titles that you'll see talking about, you know, failure within digital transformation and why why things have 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 kind of gone wrong. Um, and a study from McKinsey um, more recently estimated that. Um, three quarters of, of kind of data leaders within within businesses that they'd surveyed said that the impacts of, of revenue or cost improvement they'd achieved through these types of projects was less than 1%. Um, and the, these technologies aren't necessarily anything new uh, since, since the 1950s and even, even back then, um, there was a, a, the UK commissioned a, a, a mathematics professor called Sir James Lighthill to, to appraise the um, pra pragmatically and frankly the, the potential of AI. And his, his report, his quite famous report, was pretty scathing about the overblown nature of, of what AI and, and digital technologies can actually can actually do. Um, but unlike, uh, unlike the 1950s where um, we are being they, they were a little bit hamstrung by by the technology itself, now that that technology is in place and yet we're still seeing a lot of digital transformation efforts falling by the wayside. Um, and I guess the big reason that we're that we're tending to see, that in, in a marketing context in, in the work that we do with with our clients is cultural it's about people and there's a little quote here from a guy with a great name called randy bean um who's who's a founder of um a, a kind of um data research and intelligence company an investment company um talking about the fact that 92 percent of um, businesses, of, of companies report that they continue to struggle with, with cultural challenges. And that's the main driver of, of why some of these digital transformation efforts aren't, aren't taking fruition. Um, and for me, that that still kind of comes down to, to, to two areas as well. So when we're talking about culture and people re relative to businesses, um, there's there's customers obviously and then the, the number one rule in in um in in marketing is to be market oriented think about your customers um think about how they use your products think about how they um how they have needs and how they enter your category uh and then on the other side of that is is staff and employees and and um between those two groups of people um i've kind of looked at the the idea of, of the sort of value exchange with with customers how are you providing value how are you providing added value through um digital transformations to to the customer itself what what benefit are they are they actually seeing off the back of all these which is really the crux of, of, of a lot of digital transformations within marketing what competitive advantage are you actually creating that's communicated to the customer why they should buy from you and buy from you um, on on a repeated basis, um, and from a staff perspective, that that cultural exchange. So there's there's a there's an inherent um, I guess resistance or or maybe skepticism towards um, some digital technologies. Even we see it within digital marketing itself, where you would assume. Um, you know, pe people are very open and, and welcome to the idea of of, of that transformative digital digital technologies, AIs, machine learning, and that kind of thing. But being told what to do by a by a machine um, is is something that obviously uh, can 
um, can can kind of jerk a little bit uh, with the with the kind of human ego. There is an ego egotism element to it. Um, so it's really about how we position uh, uh, the, the the kind of div digital transformation technologies and processes relative to staff and employees as a as a support mechanism rather than something to kind of gazump or replace their experience and their their knowledge. Um, and there's just a couple of, of kind of overlaps and main things that we that we sort of tend to see um, between these two kind of intersecting groups of people. Um, but I just wanted to touch on quite briefly, and and that was um, really to to focus on uh, projects that drive economic value and setting smart objectives. So objectives for your customers and objectives for your staff in in reaching and and doing better business with those customers, and um, educating and empowering those staff, building first party data strategies so first party data is a, a big thing in marketing at the moment big thing in business more generally I, I won't go into all the the kind of things that are going on from a technology perspective around google moving away from cookies and website browsers and all, all that kind of thing but more on um data being the means rather than the end and how are we creating relationships with customers to actually um, build out those data profiles in the first instance, and then how is how is the use of that data actually communicated to them in an effective way? Do they do they see a, the benefit of of any of that uh, data that they're they're openly sharing with you? And then finally, education, training, and kind of stakeholder management. So none of this stuff gets done without um, without championing internally without people and resource who are willing to um, get behind these um, these initiatives and and the, the 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 two prior points to that really kind of um, help to 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 shore up and and um, kind of push forward that education um, so I guess from from a from a, a prioritization perspective, so many of these projects that we see with with our clients, um, it could be a, a a smaller kind of initiative around eCRM or the way that they're using um, machine learning to target their customers in a more effective way through advertising, through programmatic advertising, something like that. Um, it's it's ultimately got to come back down to to economic benefit and. Um, it's something that uh, I think a lot of the time um, companies and our clients can can fall a little bit foul of is setting those objectives and getting getting a clear strategy and plan in place for why you're embarking on that particular uh, exercise project, why you're investing someone's money, ultimately the business's money, uh, the CEO signing off on that particular project, why you're doing it, and. We always try and start there in, in any of the projects and plans that we that we undertake. So this is a very traditional kind of marketing conversion analysis view, that, that kind of funnel view, awareness through to conversion and, and advocacy. Um, and what, what we're kind of seeing here is in this example, in this illustration, we could invest all our time and, and our, our, our efforts into digital um, programs at those earlier stages within awareness and consideration are are our customers even aware we're we're, we're alive we're, we're a brand we're a business we're trading um are, are they are they aware of us but they just wouldn't consider us etc cetera, etc cetera. doing that conversion analysis and identifying where the kind of holes in the hose pipe are for your particular business helps to focus and prioritize those exercises in in the same way that you you would normally do that for for other areas so understanding that in this particular instance the big drop off for your business is between preference and conversion you can double down and hone um that that project uh, and the prioritization of that project in that particular area because you you know it's going to drive the biggest economic value for for the company um, so in this particular instance, these these numbers are fictitious, but based on real work that we're doing with 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 real clients, a leading UK legal firm, um, they saw this this actual um, uh, uh, this this conversion um, kind of gap or, or opportunity, and really what it boiled down to was a lack of a joined up ECRM. 
uh, they, they had a case management system that uh, stored all, all their case, their live case data uh, that was kind of used by the, the, the fee owners and by the, the, the solicitors and, and partners um, to, to track those cases. But there was no join up between that and the ECRM um, and where those leads originally came from, which basically meant that 58% of leads uh, that came into the business and were, were handled in that system, 50% uh, of people wanting help were basically being routed to the wrong departments. And that was leading to a total of 30% total wastage in leads. So this immediate analysis made us realize that a, a, a program and a project that would that would help uh, address this issue would be, you know, the most valuable in for, for this legal firm. And they, they were a firm that weren't, desperately digitally progressive, but we felt like creating this business case and demonstrating this value would be the easiest way to do that and then almost create that snowball effect of seeing the benefit and then allowing that to then iterate off into other projects. So um, I won't go into detail on, on the um, the actual implementation, but the, the gist of it was we, we basically created um, uh, a series of, 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 of connections and APIs around a new eCRM implementation um, that allowed them to track that uh, the status um, and, and value of that case right through um, uh, from, from initial lead through to kind of almost marketing and sales qualified status. Um, through through to the case um, being being opened or closed, and it allowed us to also create a feedback loop which sent that information back up into their uh, their web analytics system, so that we could see uh, how effective their marketing campaigns were actually being um, at driving not just leads which which weren't qualified, but ultimately cases that were or weren't valuable to to the particular customer, and in terms of creating business cases. Um, uh, and, and making a making a noise around um, incremental change, it was it was really fantastic for them in terms of the kind of the value it drove for the business. And like I say, it, it really um, it really helped as a as a kind of touch point to to move um, things on uh, and 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 help them iterate their programs. Um, the next quick. Uh, overview was just around first party data. So using data um, responsibly. And again, I'm not going to so much go into the technologies here, um, more how we're actually growing and, and using those relationships, how we're getting data from our customers and how, how they're seeing benefits from it. And there was this famous case from Target who um, used their CRM data, it was back in 2012, used their CRM data to create personalized coupon book booklets for shoppers. And what this ultimately resulted in, it was a famous case around an American father ringing up target customer service, irate, because uh, they'd sent his daughter coupons uh, for pregnancy products, for, for young mother products. And he accused them of, of basically baby mongering um, because she wasn't pregnant as far as he was concerned. A couple of days later, he rang back up Target customer service to apologize. Turned out she was pregnant and Target knew before he did based on her purchase history of zinc, magnesium, cocoa butter lotion, those types of things. So in that particular instance, Target was probably overstepping the mark a little bit. Um, but what I wanted to kind of just talk about was um, using data responsibly, um, not just doing a, a creating a digital program, creating databases and collecting all this data to use without really too much thought about how we actually use it and, and what benefit the the the, value, the uh, customer sees from that, creating that value exchange. So how are you actually capturing that data in the first instance? What kind of relationship are you building? Are you offering thought leadership newsletters? competitions and offers, uh, progressive profiling on, on customer data you do already have, events, webinars, these types of content marketing efforts to create that value exchange, I think are really key and often don't get talked about uh, relative to the actual technology driving um, that, that first party data capture. And there's a couple of reports from the University of London around Facebook advertising where over rather than covert data collection leads to better um, better advertising, more efficient advertising, and a study by by ScienceWise um, uh, that was commissioned by the UK around um, 
people wanting to see personal benefits and incentives from their data um, uh, and, and, and associating that you know, more openly with giving their data away. But Deloitte in a, in a further study saying that 62% of, of um, consumers weren't confident that their um, that their data was being used um, to, to any kind of benefit or, or means. Um, there was a quick uh, case study that we, that we just had um, for the brand Aperol, where they had to essentially pivot uh, in this particular instance during COVID um, as a as an on-trade uh, brand, largely speaking, dealing with bars and restaurants and selling directly to, to those intermediaries rather than directly to the to the consumer. Obviously, bars and, and, and restaurants all closed during during lockdown. So Aperol needed to pivot um, their kind of business model, their comms and um, their data towards that at home consumer drink, drinking at home, maybe trying to relive the Italian holiday that they missed out on by having an Aperol spritz. Um, so uh, what, what, what was created with it was a series of, of, of content marketing programs um, uh, was uh, on-site content to, to allow data capture, email content, and um, f further kind of engaging informational content to, to build this kind of ecosystem around value, value addition for the, for the user, competitions, online cocktail making webinars, those types of things to, to give something back to the user to enable that that data capture to happen because Aperol basically didn't have a very big consumer database they were they were used to dealing with the trade um, what this ultimately led for for Aperol was about a 256 percent increase in the number of um, consumer uh, consumer profiles that they had within their database so again it's just sort of thinking about not just the technology behind the data but how you're leveraging it in a user a user facing manner and then the very final piece was just around education the, the, the education discussion that we had so again going back up to the first point around um, prioritizing projects. It's easier for staff and stakeholders to see the value of digital transformation if they can if they can understand it for themselves, if they can see the objectives, if they can see the benefits clearly set out, rather than a, a larger, more abstract kind of digital transformation umbrella. If you can break that down into projects and chunks that they can understand, it's much more easy to, to get their heads around. Um, Finding a stakeholder champion, um, we've we've been lucky enough to to have these uh, across a number of our clients. Um, someone that's driving growth uh, or driving that that initiative um, internally, but really it does have to come um, from uh, you know senior stakeholders and and from the top down. It's it's no good really coming from within the middle of the company. So uh, whether or not you can recruit or create a kind of um, center of excellence within your team, a racy to, to bring um, digital transformation forward. And then education in terms of baking in formalized training, education of staff, linking that to PDPs, to, to kind of cultivating, um, incentivizing that even in monetary terms, um, usage of technologies, because it's, it's fine just buying a new piece of kit, a new bit of software. But so often we see the misuse and misunderstanding of that of that technology or what it does which ultimately leads to people thinking that it doesn't add value anyway and it becomes a kind of vicious cycle um you can obviously do that in terms of in terms of auditing and and what you really need to do is take a benchmark of of where you are and and, and where things currently sit within your your particular organization um we tend to try and create these for for, for different clients in, in terms of capability maturity models um, to to understand where they are and, and where where we can move those um, clients towards um, in 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 realistic terms uh, according to smart objectives. Um, you're not going to go from one to five in this particular example from from initial to optimized in six months, twelve months. But can you make incremental gains um, by understanding where you currently sit where where your 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 knowledge and skills within your team sit, where the management buy-in sits, those types of things to to understand where you can prioritize your efforts. So just quickly in summary, 
prioritizing projects uh, that drive economic value, set smart objectives um, around your business, around your people, your consumers, and your uh, employees. If it takes longer than 12 months to implement generally, uh, especially if it's a, if it's a, um, if you're at the start of this journey, move on and find something that's a little bit quicker to implement and demonstrate the, the value, the economic value with. Data is the means, not the end. So understanding and thinking about that value exchange with, with customers and, and then seeking senior stakeholder sponsorship and, and re-education and buy-in. It can start with something as simple as a reading list amongst uh, a group of people um, and then, and then uh, going on from there. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. So um, obviously, uh, feel free. Like we 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 um, we host a lot of content on the Sticky Eyes site, um, uh, and and feel free to to head on over there. We there's a there's a link you can follow to read a little bit more about um, some of the the uh, kind of initiatives and things that we're on with it at the moment, and and how we're we're kind of trying to tie that that digital transformation effort together for for some of our clients, but. Um, for now, that's that's um, that's everything for me. So thank you very much.